When you find an old arrowhead, it looks old because it's been in the ground, it's been used, got dings in it and everything. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna call these antiquities. I like um, replicating old things that I've, I've had in the past. You know, putting the magnets in the ground and let them get all oxidized from the chemicals in the ground. I would use peat moss and pour water on it and soak things in it. And we used to put magnets on the roof of our buildings and everything just so we could make things look old, you know. And then I came up with uh, ideas to uh, grind and tumble and, and the aging process. I call it done aged and it's a machines that I built to uh, help calibrate the magnets. You know, and we used to go around the old buildings like in Santa Barbara and, and vacuum up corners of old warehouses and everything and there's all kinds of uh, cool dust, I mean old dust. It, it was comical in a sense, you know, trying to make something look old and you know, someone said, wow, look at that old pickup, you know, and you just made it like 15 minutes ago. The antiquities are still, for those guys who want that old looking sound and tradition, they can buy a new guitar or a they find a beat up one in a pawn shop and uh, put the antiquities in it and it just gives you that character. There's just something about uh, an old old thing, you know, in your guitar. It just, just has, has a soul to it almost. For years, I have been working with artists, you know, like from Jeff Beck and Roy Buchanan and uh, meeting friends like Danny Gatton and uh, all these guitar players that always would like playing the vintage instruments, you know. And a lot of them had a problem with the bobbin on the inside here. The pole pieces can actually rust a little bit and it can break down the magnet wire that's wrapped directly to the coil here. And Gibson had the uh, cloth braid wire, but they had the, uh, the shield wrapped around the outside of it. So they were, had these machines that could weave, almost like making a pair of socks, but they would use strands of wire. And uh, this is like seven strand, 22 gauge uh, wire. They went to a bone color, bone I think they would call it. And then in the 70s, they went to a gray, like a little bit darker color. But the, all the original stuff was uh, uh, after Oh, they started using the black fiber, uh, vulcanized fiber. They would go to the gray material. So, and then they changed the magnets. The magnets were different. Uh, instead of grinding them, they would tumble them to save time. Some of the lengths were different too. They would change the dimensions. They went to a, instead of like the old tellies were 197, they went to a 187. So here's a 54 uh, telly antiquity. And uh, it's got the raised D and G. And these are like, what Steve Cropper would use, Booker Keeney MGs, you know, 58, 59, Telly he was using and everything. This would be like a home oh, 54 Telly base, you know, which were really cool. We, we did them for Dusty Hill from ZZ Top all the time. And Sting uses this type of pickup and everything. This would be like a, a 53 model. And it's almost like the same flat work for the top that the Telecasters would use, you know. Here's the old, uh, the first lap steels that Leo was doing. And they had a telly top on it again. So they had a telly top, but on the 
the old lap steels, the champs or whatever they're called, uh, had the rectangular flat work. And a lot of guys were taking these pickups, they, a lot of them would send them to us and we would have to mount telly bottom plates on the bottom of them. Uh, and then they would put them in their tellies. But these sounded different than like a 53 model because the bottom flat work on this is thinner, like a broadcaster is a .062 instead of .093 and that would change the winding area uh, when the bottom and top and they were using the 625 magnet Alnico 2 and it was like a 197 diameter it would sound a little bit different than your tele pickup I like going in with the antiquities because it just records so well I get the tone that I've always loved growing up and when you have a tone that you like it makes you play a certain way or play better The box that I got, it had some old Fender lap steels in it, original from, from Fender, you know, Leo Fender had wound, I don't know if Abigail wound them or what, but the thing with them, they were wrapped, and I just thought, it was so. I just said, yeah, look at this, man, it's just so neat how they would protect them so they wouldn't bang around. They were wrapped in like this real neat tissue paper, you know, like, you know, when you buy jewelry in a store, they had it wrapped, and so somebody took the time to wrap each one of these and put it in tissue paper, and that's how Leo sold it, you know. So I told MJ, I said, man, we got to start doing that, you know. And then um, we would start dating and label. I mean, we have all the dates and labels for every pickup we ever made in the antiquity shop, you know. And then I was always messing around with sewing machines and stuff. And so I was making, sewing little bags and everything. And then I finally, you know, wanted to do a bag like this, you know. And then guys, when they got the bag, they could put a slide bar in it or put, guitar picks in it and pulls the string and throw it in your guitar case. I developed that back in the early 80s, you know, 80s. So I've always liked messing with stuff like that. I have some new ideas that I'm going to be coming up with pretty soon too, and I'm, I'm excited about it, you know. 